But right now, joining us, I'm happy to say, to talk about everything that's gone on today within the, uh, the Trump campaign, is Richard Vigory, chairman of uh, conservativehq.com, political strategist, conservative activist, pioneer of direct mail fundraising, and author of Takeover, the 100-year war for the soul of the GOP and how conservatives can finally win it. Uh, Richard, great to talk to you. Thank you so much for being here, sir. Good to be with you, Steve. All right, so you have reacted positively to, uh, to what took place today with uh, Kellyanne Conway uh, being uh, named the, uh, the campaign manager and Stephen Bannon uh, from Breitbart being named the, uh, the campaign uh, chief executive. Uh, explain why. Well, I've had as, uh, for many decades, Steve, uh, a kind of a philosophy. Tell me who you walk with, and I'll tell you who you are. I think that applies particularly to uh, candidates. If candidates are not walking with us now, they're not likely to surround themselves with conservatives if they uh, move into the office of governor or president in this case. And personnel is policy. And uh, a candidate can promise us the sun, the moon, the stars, but if all they surround themselves with, as most establishment Republicans like the Bushes do, is big government, uh, Wall Street types, our issues are over with. We, we've lost. So uh, if you look at uh, Donald Trump's campaign now, it's basically made up of movement conservatives. Kellyanne Conway, Steve Bannon, uh, Jeff Sessions, Mike Pence. These are charter members of the conservative movement. It's, uh, it's very exciting. I haven't seen anything like this since uh, the 1980 Reagan campaign against Carter. Well, that's great. That's great to hear from you. And, and, and let me ask you this, and you can't speak for other people, but you know that there are so many conservatives uh, out there uh, I'm not talking about certainly the rhinos who are all over the, the mainstream media saying, oh, you know, Trump is this, Trump is that. But the conservatives, some of the people you're talking about uh, who just say we don't trust him, he's not conservative enough, blah, 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 blah. Do you believe that this uh, is enough to, to convince them to get on board and finally stop the, you know, the shenanigans, if you will? Well, Steve, as you say, you know, I, I don't have a lot of uh, never Trump friends, but but there I do have some, and there, there are some good people out there. I think they're 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 misguided on this, and I think this is a uh, a step in the right direction. I think that they're going to be needed uh, some more steps here, but this is some very very positive signs here, and. Uh, I'm uh, uh, trying to communicate to conservatives who are never Trumpers, uh, which is a minority right now, but uh, the f don't focus on Trump, focus on Hillary. Because Donald Trump, as president, he might be wrong 20, 25, 30 percent of the time. But Hillary Clinton is going to be wrong 100 percent of the time. And if Trump is president, he will never get up in the morning like Hillary will two, three, four times every day thinking, what things can I do today to crush conservatives, put them out of business, put many of them in jail. Her goal will be to destroy the conservative movement. Donald Trump will be helping to advance the conservative movement. And that's something I never understood. People who pride themselves on being constitutionalists, for example, have to know uh, Richard, that uh, Hillary Clinton's Supreme Court uh, uh, appointments will not only uh, eviscerate the Second Amendment, but eviscerate to a great extent the First Amendment. We see these hate speech laws. Look at London. The mayor of London now is working with the social media outlets to, to police the, uh, the, the social media for hate speech. We have hate speech in Europe, in Canada. You know and I know, and they have to know, the conservatives in this country who are not on board with Trump, that Hillary will limit free speech as well. So how is it even a contest for them? I don't understand it, Steve. Uh, you articulated it very well. But in addition to what you said, the whole religious liberty issue now is right. uh, on the table. Because Hillary Clinton earlier this year said it is time for people to give up long-held, strongly-held religious beliefs. So if you have traditional moral values that you get from your faith, you're going to have to give those up. I mean, that issue alone should sink her campaign. Absolutely. What do, what do you make of the, <laughs> I mean, it's a leading question, it's one of those softballs, <laughs> the media coverage. I mean, Richard, for crying out loud, I mean, in a week where there was revelations, the FBI wanted to investigate the Clinton Foundation and the Justice Department said no. That's on the heels of the DOJ head meeting with Clinton in a plane. Uh, you had pay-for-play revelations. You had the revelation that Cheryl Mills came to New York to hire someone for the Clinton Foundation. And all they talked about was what Donald Trump said, what Donald Trump meant. She's skating on all of this. Yeah, uh, you're exactly right, Steve. But 
Uh, sometimes I jokingly refer to myself as 003, which means <laughs> I've been active at the national level of the conservative movement longer than every living conservative <laughs> except two others. So I go back before the Goldwater campaign. And uh, we, we have uh, won some uh, races like uh, Ronald Reagan, 80, 84, George H.W. Uh, Bush is in 88. When he ran, he ran as a conservative. So we know how to win. We, uh, we have control, Republicans do, of Congress now and have for the most part for many years now. We know how to uh, win elections in opposition to the media. What the re conservatives have to do and the Republicans have to do is nationalize the election and change the subject from uh, Donald Trump to Hillary Clinton. And you nationalize it as they did in 2010 with the Tea Party victory. In 2014, they nationalized the election around opposition to Obamacare, national security, crony corrupt government. And if they nationalize the election, they're going to win this election in spite of the media. Am I correct at the time when, uh, at the convention, when uh, uh, Senator Cruz went up there and, and made that reprehensible speech, you said he committed political suicide? Yes, okay. I was on the floor yes. of the convention yes. then. I, exactly. I, I remember reporting that the next day. Okay, so I am right. Uh, so, so let me ask you this. Trump has said a lot of things. As far as the electorate goes, as far as being a presidential candidate goes, as far as the ability to win this election still, uh, do you believe he has done or said anything that has been uh, politically suicidal or may, may turn out to be politically suicidal? Well, Steve, the, the thing that uh, I'm, I'm very critical of, uh, of Donald Trump in, in one area. Uh, I've said for over a year the Republicans have to do two things to win. If they do these two things, they will win this election. Uh, number two was be a fighter. You must have a candidate. You can't be somebody like Jeb Bush who's, who's not a fighter. And so they've got a fighter in Donald Trump for certain. And the number one thing they have to do, though, is unite the party. Uh, and the base of the party is right now not all on board. The cultural conservatives are not on board. A lot of the movement conservatives are not on board. And Donald Trump, it's his responsibility to reach out and bring those people on board. He's not done a good job on that. He's been too critical of a lot of our conservative uh, heroes out there. Right. And he needs to unite the party. And if he unites the, the base of the party, he will be the next president. Excellent. Richard, it's an honor. And I hope you'll come back, sir. Thank you so much. A pleasure. Richard Vigory, ladies and gentlemen, the one and the only. All right, uh, we have a full show for you. We're going to discuss all this and more with the former governor of the state of New Hampshire, of course, John Sununo. He will join us next. Uh, we have a, a lot in store. Your phone calls as well, of course, because that's what we try to do here at Newsmax. And uh, that's different than every other network out there. 877 Newsmax, 877 Newsmax. That is the number. A lot to get to today. A busy show, as you can tell already. You're watching the Steve Malzberg Show right here. We are live on Newsmax Television. Don't go away.